This is Pete Moore on Halo Talks NYC. I have the pleasure of doing a remote video conference call here with my friend Bill Davis, CEO, ABC Financial, hailing from Cincinnati, Ohio, by way of the Mecca, Little Rock, Arkansas, ABC headquarters. Bill, welcome to Halo Talks. Great. Thanks, Pete. I really appreciate you, uh, you having me. Sure. So unfortunately, we couldn't get together in person in uh, San Diego, but uh, as we say at the Integrity Square, safety first. Uh, so we will get through this. We just did a podcast uh, a couple of days ago and told people, you know, this too shall pass and we will come out stronger. And uh, But I don't want to make this podcast just about triaging uh, the, the coronavirus here. I really want to focus on where ABC is in the pecking order of um, being able to be the best in class billing service provider and marketing services and making sure you're the backbone and trampoline, if you will, of the uh, health and fitness industry. Um, but why don't we start off with you giving your background and, and talking about why you decided to uh, to take over this opportunity here with uh, with Toma Bravo. Yeah, I, I'm happy to. And, and I do I do want to kick off by, you know, acknowledging that we're we're obviously in some very, very difficult times. You know, the industry as a whole is is uh, is doing their very best to navigate. You know, the uh, uh, the uncertainties that we all face. So, my heart really sincerely goes out to everybody that's uh, you know directly or indirectly challenged by the uh, the corona the coronavirus crisis that we're in the midst of. So, I know we'll talk about that more a little bit later. In terms of my background. Um, I like to tell people that my introduction to ABC was very much by chance. Um, I really, um, I really view myself as a health enthusiast, but not one that you know grew up in the fitness industry. Rather, I spent the better part of twenty some odd years in the enterprise software uh, space in some very interesting segments of the of the technology sector. Most notably, about twelve years in the healthcare. IT arena, another five, almost six years in the education IT arena. And um, it was through Tomo Bravo, who's the owner of ABC, that I was first introduced to Paul Schaller and the ABC team back in December of 18. And um, through a series of conversations, you know, ultimately realized that, um, you know, I could, I could help Paul in, in, the, in the organization you know, if I committed my efforts on a more full-time basis. So that's actually what I did starting in February of last year. Great. So, so Paul Shaw and I have been close friends for a long time. He uh, likes to use the quote that ABC was a 38 year overnight success. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I, I, that always sticks with me. Um, so from a standpoint of, you know, bringing in, uh, you know, I guess it used to be called venture capital. Now I would just say it's just private capital. Uh, into a business uh, such as ABC, what, what do you see as the benefits for clients when you've got an institutional capital provider, you know, along the lines of, uh, of Toma Bravo, which, you know, I would argue is probably one of the top 20 private investment firms in the country? Yeah, if not the, if not the world, quite honestly, you know, I would say, I would say the obvious, the obvious answer is the capital that they bring that it allows us the ability to make the level of investment that we're committed to make into ABC. But what does distinguish Tomo Bravo from, you know, the other private equity firms is, is that they focus exclusively on technology and in technology enabled companies. And they quite frankly saw before I did, because they, they, they were in the, uh, in the investment for a better part of a year before I was introduced to it. They saw an unbelievable foundation that is that 38-year heritage of ABC for which they could build upon and, quite frankly, redefine an industry in terms of much more comprehensive, much more holistic club management capabilities that, quite frankly, every customer, every prospect that I talk to is desperately asking you know, the industry to figure out because mm -hmm. it ultimately is the way in which the, the industry – you know, wants to operate and are looking to a valued partner like ABC to ultimately deliver. Got it. So when you looked at uh, taking on this this opportunity and you saw the the fragmentation in the industry, and you also saw the number of 
gadgets and APIs going yeah. back and forth with all these other software companies that were all trying to solve, you know, little pieces of, of the customer uh, frustration circle, if you were, uh, if you will. You know, how do you kind of view ABC as, you know, that that open source provider versus saying, you know, at some point I need to figure out and, and control the software in order to provide the best experience uh, for the customer? Or, you know, am I, or, or do you kind of view yourself more as like the potential, like, Facebook of the industry and you can kind of launch whatever you want off of my, my trampoline, or is that kind of in process? Yeah. So great question. And what I would assure everyone is this is not uh, particularly unique to the fitness industry. I appreciate that those that live and operate within the fitness industry, it may feel that way, but this is very reminiscent to what I witnessed in the healthcare industry almost 20 years ago in the education industry about 10 years ago. And as you suggested, it, it is very commonplace to see the adoption of technology, first and foremost, take the form of these single point solutions and in wanting to avail yourself of their unique capabilities. But you get to a point, and I would assert that the fitness industry is very much at this point, where you say, the value is not just in those individual point solutions, but how can they effectively be integrated in a way where there's a seamless um, workflow that benefits not only the club operator, but ultimately, and I think the, the coronavirus crisis that we're in the midst of amplifies this even more so than it was a few months ago, but it amplifies the benefits to the member themselves and the experience that you are providing your member through the effective use of technology. So the role that I see ABC playing in all of that is the um, foundation or the epicenter, if you will, of how all of those uh, disparate capabilities can be integrated. And to your point, I don't believe that that necessitates ABC owning all of those capabilities, but I do believe that we play an essential role of providing that open network to where it can be seamlessly integrated and we can do a lot to improve the user experience so that it feels in, in the experience is one you know that is much more seamless again from both the club operator but also from the members uh, vantage point mm -hmm. so, so when you think about you know ABC today or or ABC of what you were going to launch at, at Ursa what, what was the uh what was the big coming out party at Ursa that we unfortunately missed? Well, we've touched on a lot of, and, and I hope, I hope we, you know, in due course, we have an opportunity to um, come to market with all the exciting announcements that we did plan at Ursa. But it, it really started with this uh, new, more expansive vision of, of what the new ABC, you know, wants to become. And it involved us being very clear in our commitment around that 38-year history of ABC and, and, and its foundation centered around our newly uh, imagined and um, modernized capabilities of revenue cycle management. But sitting on top of that, how we are thinking about this integrated club management solution. And the way we, we think about it from a workflow perspective really starting the moment that that member or prospect is walking through that door of that club and how they're interacting, whether it's the new sales experience, whether it's the check-in experience to their engagement to all of your club programming mm -hmm. around things like personal training and um, integration of your uh, wearable devices into the, uh, the technology or the, uh, the equipment you know, that you're exercising on to how you are actually, you know, engaging with point of sale solutions. And an example I like to say is, you know, imagine a day that you're going into a spin class and your desire to actually electronically, you know, schedule that your smoothie is ready for you 10 minutes after your class conclusion so that you can actually pick it up on your way out. It's that, it's that workflow design and the integrated capabilities that uh, really are the underpinnings of the new ABC. I also would tell you, I also would tell you, Pete, that, you know, we, it was going to be a joined with a repositioning of the company from a brand, 
from a naming uh, a naming change uh, that I'm not prepared to announce. Oh, come uh, on, yes. Bill. No, Tell we're us, gonna, man. We're gonna keep that. We're gonna keep that in reserve. Damn, but, I, um, I gotta get Wolf Blitzer on like a breaking news. <laughs> the thing that's there, bothered me about breaking news, by the way, is that they used to only use breaking news yeah. on CNN for actually like really, you know, like meaningful things that are happening. Now they're trying to find something to put into breaking news. It's constant. But this could qualify. This could qualify. It's constant. It's constant. But there's there's a new look and feel. There there's a new look and feel of ABC that's on the horizon that we think does a more effective job of really encapsulating all that I've described in terms of what we what we aspire to become in the future. So you're telling us live here on Halo Talks that ABC Financial will have a different name at some point in the next 30 to 90 days that we'll learn about. Yeah, I think I think just given the current circumstances, you know, we really feel like our our focus needs to be on on helping our our customers and in the industry as a whole, you know, navigate this uh this very unprecedented and difficult times in due course. Yes. I'm, I'm very comfortable telling you that you should expect that. And we look forward to sharing that with the market as a whole, you know, here over the coming months. Gotcha. You know, one of the things we brought up the other day on this webinar we were doing, I want to get your take on it, but I, I kind of use the equivalent uh, analogy that this is kind of like halftime in your business. Like yeah. when was the last time you actually had 90 days to be in suspended animation? Uh, if you will. And yeah. you're basically now saying, okay, let me rethink my entire business. We're talking to people and they're like, well, what do I do when I reopen? It's like, well, dust off your pre-sale book, right? And you got a certain amount of members that you've already sold. But the problem is you've got 21 days to break a habit in general, which is basically what we sell to people. And now we're going to have to resell ourselves on the fact that all these habits have been broken. Yeah. Um, so when you look at, you know, the, the halftime show here, like the, are some new clients calling you and saying, you know what, I've actually wanted to change over to ABC, but I've been fighting, you know, operational fires that I never had a chance to rethink my billing software. And maybe I could do this while I have effectively have some downtime. Yeah. Uh, or has it not gotten to that yet? No, we're seeing some of that. We're seeing some of that dialogue, but I would say that it's underscored by, you know, people really wanting to have a better sense of, of how long, you know, the, the shutdowns and, and the dislocation, you know, will persist. But I, I think you are slowly but surely starting to see people, you know, begin to think about what the, what the ultimate recovery uh, looks like, what that trajectory is. Um, as it pertains to ABC, you know, specifically, I'll, I'll share a few things that we're, you know, we're focused on in anticipation of that as well. So our head of product, uh, a gentleman named Ryan Packer, one of the, the new leaders that I attracted to the business over this past year, he's working on a, a thought leadership piece that that is going to, you know, really speak to another January in June or another January in July. Right. And and to your point, it's it's how you know, how do these clubs reimagine and reengage with their membership and prospect base, uh, you know, to come back to the clubs in what I arguably will be new world order. We are also critically evaluating, even though we were fully prepared to unveil our product roadmap for the next 12 to 18 months at URSA in March, in light of what has transpired, you know, we're back at the drawing board, reimagining those capabilities that have become front and center to ensure that our customers, clubs as a whole, you know, have an opportunity to anticipate what members are going to be expecting, um, again, post this, uh, post, post this shutdown period. It's hard to imagine that as a prerequisite, members are going to uh, you know, expect, I said another way, I think they are going to expect you know, that um, capabilities that allow them to exercise outside the club is going to be part of the integrated offering that they're uh, that they're going to naturally expect as part of their membership, and so we're we're imagining how how those capabilities ultimately can be integrated into uh, ABC's overall offering. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned before, like you know, ordering your smoothie, you know, from your mobile app that's yeah. powered by. So so would that app be powered by ABC or you know new name TBD? Yes. Uh, so, so, okay, interesting. And then from a standpoint of you coming into the business and layering on 
I want to get to the point of how you think about the business. So, you know, in in the past, and I've been known ABC for, you know, a short 20 years now. And, you know, the, the, the mission was, look, we will collect your money and we will make sure it's in your bank account. Okay. And 20 years ago, that was a lot easier actually than it is today with cybersecurity, PCI compliance, you know, privacy issues. Um, so, you know, you talk, talk for a couple of minutes, one about the benefit of size and being part of, a, of an organization and a client of ABC versus potentially a smaller undercapitalized billing company that, you know, doesn't have the number of developers that you have on staff and, and support. And then also, secondly, how you think about what ABC is, because it's no longer, oh, those are the guys that collect cash for me, you know, on credit cards and do some of my back end. Like, I feel like there's a, a total shift of, like, this is my mission critical, you know, X, Y, Z. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not what it used to be. Maybe that was part of the URSA, you know, rollout, but, you know, those are, those are two full questions. Yeah. So we are, again, I'll, I'll, I'll share a little bit of what we were uh, going to talk about at URSA. And that is our promise to the marketplace uh, really centers around the fact that we stand for the health of your business and the fitness of your members. And if I could, if I could break that down for you, you talked about the fact that ABC's heritage is really grounded in the accuracy, completeness, uh, and fulfillment of you know the revenue cycle and and everything that's associated with that. I want to be very clear that that will remain core, you know, to what ABC uh, provides to its its customers in the market as its whole. But as I indicated before, we see an opportunity to expand that in a way that helps clubs drive more efficiency and effectiveness on the front end in their, in their uh, member experience to where they're not only enhancing that member experience, but hopefully in turn optimizing, you know, the club's performance through optimized revenue. Again, perfect example of that is one of the chief pain points for many of our customers centers around uh, the proliferation of personal training and, and how that whole scheduling and monetization process uh, works both again from the member experience, but also from the club operation experience. And we see a way in which we can be much more impactful in terms of that capability. Another perfect example, which we were going to talk a lot about at URSA, centered around you know the new sales uh, new sales module capabilities. So how do you attract and retain new members in a much uh, much less uh, you know, friction-based uh, set of processes um, and, and do that in a way that is, again, a delightful experience for the member itself. So all of that, you know, speaks to a, an expanded set of capabilities that um, ABC is committed to deliver. I want to touch on two things. One is, you know, ABC size. The reality is, is that today we support, you know, a little over 40% of the clubs in the U.S. And, um, we're very proud of that fact, but it does speak to your, 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 your comments around, you know, how, how significant of a role, you know, ABC plays in terms of supporting uh, many of the fitness clubs in the U S the second is the commitment to investment. I'm very proud of the fact. And, and again, I think it speaks to our size that we're committing well over $30 million a year in, in our, our platform from a technology spend perspective. And um, that tends to represent the, the total size of many of these point solutions, you know, in terms of their overall P&L. So ABC having the wherewithal, uh, you know, to do that on a year over year basis, I think speaks to the, the level of progress that we, uh, we envision making over the coming years. Gotcha. So as you look towards um, some of the larger clients you have um, in you, you think about your business any differently, whether I've got three health clubs, I've got one health club, I've got 300. How do you think yeah. about providing, you know, the, the, the reporting, the analytics, the trend analysis, uh, you know, these real-time operational tools to, to empower the, 
the, the manager to say, okay, here, I understand my business and what's going on. And going back to that old adage that you can't manage anything that you can't measure. Yeah, I, it's a great call out. And I would tell you, if you said, Bill, what is the biggest change that you have enacted at ABC over the year that you've been there? It's exactly to this point. And, I, and that is a fundamental belief that there is an opportunity to drive significantly more value if we take a much more segmented approach. And what I mean by that is the large or the mega club operators, their needs and their capabilities are very different than if you are running, owning and operating, you know, a handful of clubs. And, and so we have spent a lot of time in the segmentation of the marketplace and have thought about everything from ways in which we sell to those uh, segment, segmented markets, the way in which we onboard, the way in which we deliver, the way in which we support, the way in which we report, you know, uh, provide reporting capabilities. Because the reality is, is that their needs, their capabilities are different, mm -hmm. and the fundamental challenges that they're trying to address also are different. And, and so we've put a lot of care and attention into that. And so that is, again, yet another you know, significant change that you should anticipate, you know, around the new ABC in terms of how we approach the market and the overall, the overall needs of those, uh, of those differentiated uh, segments. That's great. Thanks. So uh, w w one question and to, to kind of put you on the spot here. So, you know, a number of, of clients that are looking at new software uh, deployments, uh, they might say, you know, ABC, oh, yeah, I love what they're doing, but, you know, it's more expensive. And yeah. what I usually say to people is, you know, most places in life, you get what you pay for. Um, and also in this industry, you have to think about, you know, if I'm, if I'm, if I own a piece of real estate, my real estate is the asset. If I own a health club chain and I'm, I'm leasing locations, my only asset is my membership base. Yeah. And my membership base, where that is in the differential between 50 or a hundred basis points or, you know, one to 2% of the total dollar amount to, to process and to maintain that and to have someone overseeing it, you know, why don't you think about asset protection versus what this shows up as an expense? So how do you, how do you think about that from, you know, look, I'm not, I'm not trying to get to, to the, I'm not trying to get you to the lowest cost denominator. I'm trying to basically provide you a security system and this is what it costs. Yeah, I think I, 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 I'm going to respond to that in two different ways. And one of my responses is going to surprise you, given your okay. history, given your history with ABC. I do believe I do believe that ABC has a demonstrated track record uh, to deliver real value and differentiated value to our, our membership base in terms of the quality of service and it ultimately manifesting itself in improved retention and ultimately improved monetization of, of the kind of total potential uh, membership dues and, and, related, uh, and related revenues. Um, so we, we, we do a lot of work understanding the services that we provide and the value that they produce, you know, for our, for our uh, customer base and, and very proud of, of our results in that regard. That being said, this is the part that's going to surprise you. I do believe that ABC has an opportunity to do more in the future in, in being more intentional around the services that we provide, the ability to ascribe value to those discrete services in giving a customer base more option or more choice in what they choose to leverage ABC for versus not. Because at the end of the day, it's critically important from a customer's perspective for them to be able to associate that I am getting this service for this value, I ascribe value to it, and therefore I'm willing to pay for it in, in that manner. And I think that's, as you think about um, ABC offering more and more capabilities to the marketplace, we're going to need to be able to distinguish in that way to where customers feel like they have choice. And so, it's so basically that, an, uh, somewhat of an unbundling, uh, you yeah. know, a la carte menu in the future. Yes. And or, or being intentional in bundles that, that meet specific needs back to the segmentation point, Got it. what, what a three club operator needs from a baseline functionality to reporting, 
to club management capabilities is different than if you're a large or mega operator. Mm-hmm. You, can't, you can't approach both opportunities with the same solution set and expa- expect that they're going to ascribe the same value to that solution. And, and we recognize the need to differentiate that way and are committed to do so. Got it. So, so as we kind of fast forward, you know, to where we are today, you know, in this, uh, this pandemic, you know, what are, what are some of the things that you think are going to differentiate the winners, uh, you know, and, and unfortunately some of the losers that are going to transpire over the next 90 to 120 days? Uh, you know, we're forecasting a potential reopening of our industry, you know, probably August 1st is our, is our current crystal ball. Um, you know, we've told people, look, you know, let's figure out how to get your finances in order. Then let's talk to your banks. Let's talk to your landlords. And I think there's going to be a 60 day period where, you know, once you have clarity on that, it's going to be like, okay, we're playing football and it starts in 60 days and you know, we're basically in mini camp and yeah. how are we going to relaunch? So, so what's your, what are your thoughts on, on some of the things that people need to focus on and really you know, wake up every day and say, here's the three things I need to think about. Yeah, I, and it's, it actually is three, and you could argue two of them, you know, are interrelated. But I, I, I focus first and foremost on doing right by your members, and and I believe that if you govern your decision making making by what is in the best interest of your members, while it may be more difficult in the near term, I fundamentally believe that it will benefit you on the longer term on a longer term basis. So doing, doing right by your members, first and foremost. Second, and I wrote a, a piece on this uh, last week, as you indicated, it is critically important that you are scrutinizing your financial position as, as intensely as you can. And you are, you are levering every possible cost lever that you have in terms of you know, managing your cost in a way that you can, you can sustain, to your point, an extended period of time to where there's minimal to no revenues, you know, coming into the business. I, I was very encouraged to see, you know, the federal government step up to the order of magnitude that they did. I, I would fully anticipate that there will be more uh, relief that is going to have to be put in place if, if, uh, if this goes on as long as you suggested into and, and beyond, you know, July. And, um, and so getting your, financial house in order is is as effectively as you can, I would say number two. Third is, and we touched on this earlier, is I do believe that the expectations of the members are going to be different. If it's if it's for no other reason how um, how social distancing you know is institutionalized. And this to me is not just the spacing of your equipment. This has everything to do with Quite frankly, how you how you accept payment, you know, people's willingness to um, hand over paper money or wanting to hand a credit card and receive that back. We need to begin to imagine ways in which, you know, you can avoid uh, that human contact to overcome what undoubtedly is going to be some level of fear or trepidation within your membership base and how they're going to want to engage with your club. Mm -hmm. And then the second point related to that is beginning to imagine as part of your base base offering set how you are going to become central to your members well-being and health healthy living that involves activity and and resources that extend beyond the four walls of the fitness club yeah as you look in, and see what's happened with the uh, with the home workouts I think um, a number of groups kind of view that as a threat and now are kind of viewing as their soul opportunity and uh, they'll embrace it in, in different ways. And some of this is, is rudimentary, if you will, by doing it, you know, on a, on a zoom video or a WebEx. Um, obviously the production value isn't of, you know, some of the groups that focus on that full time, but you know, I'm, I'm in some of those classes and um, there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of people uh, and, and members that are willing to sacrifice the production quality for, yeah getting that, that, that connectivity. Well, and I, I think that, I think that production quality will naturally get better, you know, right. fairly quickly over time here. I do, I do subscribe to the view that, you know, human beings by nature 
you know, enjoy that human interaction. And I would say in the context of fitness, you know, serves to be an essential uh, catalyst for a lot of people to, you know, maintain a healthy lifestyle. So um, I am a big believer in, in the purpose, in the, uh, you know, survivability, you know, of fitness clubs, the fitness industry as a whole. But at the same time, I do believe that new modalities, new capabilities are going to be introduced that as a club operator, you need to be attentive to and figuring out how you're going to you know, ultimately integrate them into your overall offering. So uh, just, just a couple more points here. One, one of the things that I've had the benefit of over the last three weeks is to, uh, is to do one thing that I haven't done in a long time and it's slow down. Yeah. You know, and I feel as if, you know, most health club operators that we work with have been running at a hundred miles an hour. You know, they're, they're doing product demos when they have time. If they had a good month, then I've got some money. I'm going to buy some new equipment and everything's happening as a frenzy instead of like a strategic plan for 2020, for 2021. And to actually spend time in, I was looking out the window before we, we, we left our office and someone's like, Hey, what are you doing? And I, I said, you know what I'm doing? I'm thinking, All right. you know, so I mean, maybe one of the things people could do here over the next couple of months is really think about what you want your business to look like and start to write down and prioritize and don't make decisions as quickly because you have time to basically digest what's going on, add new software that's going to help you run your business so you can, you know, free up some of your time to not fight fires, but to actually think and, and take care of your members and take care of your employees. So I feel like we got into like a business frenzy that was unsustainable. Yeah, it's, um, you know, there's no doubt pace, pace of, of what we were all experiencing, you know, just a few short uh, months ago. Um, very natural to, you know, especially at this point in time, of, we were a lot of reflection going on, the sustainability of that. But like you, um, taking full advantage of, of this, uh, you know, period of time to do a lot of reflection and thinking I'm an avid runner. And, and so while we're in lockdown, you know, mode in here in the state of Ohio, we are afforded the opportunity to go out and exercise. And, um, and so, you know, it's, it's my great, it's my greatest thinking time in terms of going out and, and, uh, and, uh, being one with nature, but just, you know, a lot of thoughts in terms of, how I think about the industry, where I envision it being, you know, six months from now, 12 months from now, 24 months from now. And I'm just very excited about what lies ahead and very optimistic in terms of, um, you know, the opportunity that we have, you know, as we uh, imagine what this looks like, uh, you know, post, uh, post shutdown. Got it. So in closing here, thanks for being on Halo Talks. We appreciate it. We would like to uh, get your caricature done properly, and we want to know if you are the CEO of a company formerly known as ABC <laughs> Financial, or uh, if we'll be able to uh, to be a part of this rebranding launch as part of a breaking news. Uh, maybe we could maybe we could pay for an exclusive on the uh, on the launch. Uh, but uh, we could talk about that. We could talk about that. I, I I will say just to tease you a bit further, you know. The ABC has unbelievable brand recognition, you know, market recognition. Um, but I think at the same time, there's an opportunity to be a little bit clearer in the the industry that we serve, the role that we play in that industry. So, um, you know, you can uh, you can maybe infer from that a little bit the direction that we're headed. But we're we're very more substantive than the name to me is really the repositioning of ABC. And our commitment, our commitment to expand our capabilities to um, help our customers in a in a more expansive, more integrated, uh, more modernized way than we ever have before. So, very excited about the future of ABC, and really, really appreciate the opportunity to uh, spend time with you today, Pete. Awesome. All right, we will fast track this podcast release. Have a good run today. Stay safe. Thank you. And to the Halo sector. Uh, make sure you get in touch with uh, with ABC as your uh, your your trampoline for your business going forward. We appreciate it. Stay All safe, right, everybody. Thank Bye you. Boy. All right, All right. but take care. Bye. Thanks.